Well, this thing is an absolute beast. It's it's uh, quite heavy to pick up. Big transformer inside. Uh, what it is is a amplifier. It's a Nakamichi brand. IA-1Z. I think that's your model number there. Um, and uh, it's all digital. We've got our um, yeah, up and down volume control as uh, as buttons. There's no knob, and so it's all digital. Yeah. So the complaint is when it's at zero, it's silent. When it's at one, it's full volume. There is no adjustment to this. Uh, and apparently there's no schematic to be found either. So it's uh, ended up here and we'll see if we can work out how it works and why it's not. So this, this looks like our input control board uh, as we've got all the RCA connectors along the back here. Uh, this section is our main amplifier with the heatsink fins there, uh, it's 5 channel and it's 80 watts. Uh, there is another board under there, I'm not sure what it does. Uh, it could be uh, just a speaker output board, may have some relays on it or something, I don't know. And then on the back is our digital board on the front panel. So um, got an audio source connected, um, but I might just... Uh, uh, I'll turn it on and make sure it is on zero, make sure it comes on on zero. Uh, oh yeah, so we've got a zero here. We'll pop a speaker on. I've got the input level way down low so that when we do go, if it is full volume, it won't sound like much because the input's so low. Got my input on and we'll go up to one. I don't hear anything. Hang on. Yep, we're on CD in. Got the right input. I can hear static. Okay, if I turn the input right up, I can hear it. Ooh. There you go. And I got to a little bit higher in the scale, it suddenly came on. I'll turn the input level down again. It's quite low. Okay, so no change. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so yeah, uh, only it was interesting that it didn't come on earlier. We had to get up to about 12, but. Probably just things warming up. They haven't haven't been on for a while. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, these digital controls usually goes through a digital um, volume uh, IC. It's quite an older unit, so I don't think it's going to be like an all-in-one uh, DSP or something. It may have a separate uh, digital volume control IC, uh, and I'm thinking maybe that's bad. When we go to zero, it may kick in the mute circuit, um, which is why we don't hear anything. And then when you go to one, the mute comes off, but the uh, the IC is bad, and it's just passing it straight through at full volume. All right, just having a quick look at what these chips do, because we, if it's on this board, we don't want to rip everything apart, do we? Uh, and here we have uh, LC7821213. Uh, 212 and that's a 211 they are just uh, switches so um, they're being used to I guess select which input source is going through uh, all of these little 8 pin ICs are op amps got a bunch of them and uh, these AD7564BN are uh, digital to analog converters and then all the wiring to this board appears to go uh, come from another board under there. And the front panel connects to the board under there. 
So maybe we've got a main processing board that we need to get to, I think. The way this is designed, uh, this doesn't come off. It's a solid piece of metal all the way around and under. So this centre tray has to come out. And I think I'm pretty easier if I take it out with the rear panel. So we'll undo the rear panel screws and uh, the ones on the side for the tray. And it should all come out as one piece, hopefully. Well, it's proving a bit difficult to budge. You have to undo uh, the screws along here because the main, uh, sort of like the the control board is at the bottom level and these these uh, connectors are on that bottom level as well whereas all these ones are up on the top level which is coming off with the back plane so you need to undo these two but it really feels like it's stuck and and uh, I can't quite see from the other side but I think it's getting stuck on this it just just sort of kind of feels like down in that area or somewhere in the middle <laughs> somewhere in the middle at least but yeah she, she doesn't want to let go. Well, nothing under that board. But uh, I do see that metal plate does have a couple of screws fixing it to the back panel, of course. Um, maybe we just take that plate out separately and see what's going on underneath. Alright, so it seems the only way this tray is going to come out because the sides are bent up and these are bent over and it ain't going to get enough tilt on it to get it out is the front panel will have to come off as well as the amplifier module coming out. And then I guess the whole thing will just slide out the front. So front panel's off and it's just sort of swung out to the side there. Because you can't unplug it from the front panel. You have to get in under there and unplug it. The amplifier module has been removed. I uh, just took a photo to see what wire goes where. They have colour bands on the uh, input signal wires. And the rest is pretty much can't go wrong. There's only one place for it. And uh, what do we got here? Okay, so yeah, all the all the input wires to the amp board come off this board, and once they're unplugged, this will come off freely. Now this should work. <laughs> here we have our. Uh, AC uh, rectifier, a couple of large capacitors under there, and then yeah, power coming from that to our uh, rest of the system. Um, there's our control board down there, so that's what we're heading towards, and uh, another another input board on the back. Look at all this rust. And uh, a lot of it seems to be along this edge here. But yeah, she's all... It's interesting how it's only sort of picked on those areas. And there's our overview. Power transformer, rectifier, um, another power transformer it looks like. In fact, that board, that board has some remote connections as well. And then our control board. And if we go in a bit closer, that I see has some heavy corrosion on all of the pins. I think this has been exposed to a spill of some sort, which is why it's so rusty all along this side. Um, maybe it was in a, a very humid environment, but I think somehow a bit of liquid's got in and settled around that particular chip. Let's find out what it does. So it just contains uh, four uh, two-input OR gates. Unknown what it does in the circuit at this stage and whether it would play a part in the volume control. But if it's um, managing, uh, like, I don't know, serial data or something coming through from the front panel, then I guess things are going to get mixed up. Well, looking at it, it doesn't look as bad as it did from a distance. I mean, it looks bad, but uh, 
wonder how many of these legs are still attached under there. This may not be it at all, it might just be something ugly looking. Well, I don't think they're all that bad. But what I will say is the uh, solder joints themselves are pretty horrible. The solder has um, kind of gone the dull grey, not really connecting. Yeah, if I'll get out a little bit so you can see, kind of hopefully see that. Um, it might even be mushy if I give it a poke yeah it just comes off really easily there's no no structure to it at all so let's take the chip off redo the uh, pads and make sure that the traces aren't broken up to the pad and pop it back on and see what happens what a mission gonna plug all that stuff back together just to find out if that's the right track huh <laughs> probably not even this how is our processor looking? Like it's pretty dirty. But I don't think it's overly... It's not corroded or anything nasty. Uh, then there's that guy. Now these guys... The uh, sockets in them go... The connections in the sockets there go... And that's probably just a ROM. But we will pop it out and clean those as well. Oh, no, there's a bit of corrosion forming down on this little dude. I think the whole board needs a good wash, really. How about those guys? I need to find out which ones might be marked as perhaps a volume control, digital volume control. That'll be just sort of input stuff, I guess, for that end of the board. And we're going to have to check that these um, through holes actually do connect through to the other side um, because I can see corrosion down inside them as well, including up and around here. Um, and there's that guy, and whoever that is, that looks... But yeah, corrosion in all the through holes. In fact, that through hole there looks like it might even be destroyed you can actually see around the top it looks like the trace has disappeared it's just oh no it's just a dulled solder mask but when you scratch it off she's rusty underneath so this is our life running jumper wires through to the other side of boards <laughs> hopefully and I'm pretty sure it is it's just a ooh, ooh, is it a two layer uh, it looks like it's just a two layer I can't see any markings on the board it's a pretty fat little board though but uh, well we, all we can do is try all we can do is try and have a look and follow and see where things go what a mission Let's get to it. So we'll start by getting this one off the board and clean up if we need to clean up the pads on that. Not a lot of uh, copper on this board so it shouldn't take a, a lot of heat. I'm going to start around 340 Celsius. There we go. Because these, these sort of older boards too, you got to be careful how much heat you put on them. Oh, 
Well, they're all looking pretty good. There's no real sign of um, of the traces having eroded away from the pads here. Let's go and just, uh, just double check. Yeah, it looks pretty good. We'll check for continuity between. You can see that pad goes to these ones. So they're all right. That should go to the hole, which is all kind of rotten, so we'll need to fix that. That should go to that hole. And up here. Looks all right. A bit gross around this. Um, I'm wondering if this is some sort of opto isolator. PC eight one nine nine or nine one eight. <laughs> um, yeah, might be some kind of opto isolator. I think I should resolder this chip as well. Just kind of looks a little bit off. Maybe that chip as well. Probably wouldn't hurt. Um, but certainly all those little through holes around here need uh, need just a little bit of reassurance <laughs> to make sure that they stay connected long term. You can see the solder's kind of tarnished along here as well. Get all the crusties out from underneath the legs there. Um, don't want to put too much pressure on that of course, just a light scraping. If you bend those legs uh, just once, <laughs> they'll probably snap off if you try and bend them back. As you see the corners have eroded a little bit so you don't want to be putting any amount of flex. There's not a lot of meat left on them. I don't have a replacement on me so I just want to try and preserve what I have. Not a lot of uh, pad overhang to work with. I feel like I'm just uh, soldering the top of the pins. It's not getting under. Hmm. I wonder if I want to maybe solder the pads and then hot air it into place. Not hugely confident. Well, <clears throat> they seem to be attached. <laughs> They're not, uh, not wiggling. We'll take it as done. We've got some 25 gauge copper wire here and I'm going to feed that down through the holes and join the traces on each side just to make sure that they are securely joined because uh, they look a bit crusty in some places. Scrape a bit of the trace open. Nice hot solder iron just to burn the tarnish off. The enameling, sorry, yeah. A little bit of helper. It's 
Let's make sure that is actually soldered. Yeah, it looks like it. <coughs> Find a knife. Now you got to be aware though that when you heat the wire on this side the heat will travel through it and want to desolder what you just did. So just working quickly I guess a hot iron helps get rid of that tarnish Vanish. There <laughs> we go. And repeat for the remaining holes. Sometime later, we have freshened up the solder around the processor. And we have put in a bunch of these little wire jumpers. Just, uh, yeah, through the hole and down to the other side and scratch off the solder mask and join it back on. Um, and I've done that on all of the worst looking through holes. So there and around our main area of corrosion. And as they pop out on the other side there, here's an example. So, uh, yeah, fighting chance at the moment. Who knows? Maybe that wasn't it and we still have another issue. Maybe we actually have a failed IC somewhere. Let's turn it on. And we want our CD input. And I'll turn on my signal. And let's see what we hear. That is not fixed. Whatever that was, it wasn't the corrosion. Okay, well now we have to try and figure out which part of the circuit actually controls the volume. Well, things have taken a bit of a turn. I was just probing around trying to get an idea of the path that the signal goes through um, and yeah it was making noise and then uh, I wasn't probing uh, I was actually leaning over the back having a look at uh, the connections on the back um, because I was curious about if I probe the just probing the back of the RC it's got some output RCAs uh, which are directly off the feed to the amp amplifier so it's a good good place to probe I guess um, and yeah I hadn't even hadn't even looked at which socket I was going to go for next and I got a lot of crackling noises out of the speaker and then it went dead so uh, everything functions you push the buttons and the lights light up and stuff but we have no audio coming through now so something just gave up in a rather nasty way and I'm still thinking it's on the uh, the digital board on the bottom um, because I think what happens is although I'm not 100% sure but um, this is the line from the digital board that feeds the digital to analog converters that then feed our output to the uh, amp now there's another line there but I think this one down here is a selection of op amps here and I think this is supposed to be the feed to the the board from whichever chosen source so these chips select the source um, and it comes through the op amps to here so um, <laughs> yeah go figure um, but there's no activity up here at all there's no clock or data activity on these ICs which is not a good sign. Well nothing seems physically damaged. One thing I did miss is that this chip here is a digital signal processing chip 
Then we've got three um, D to A's up top, which again is quite weird because this is analog in, as far as I can tell. But they seem to be connected through to here. So that kind of blows my theory out of the water that that's where the analog line comes in to get sampled and sent back to our output DAX. Just a bit tricky to try and follow which ICs on the top board. Uh, well, I mean, it looks like you know, there's a couple that take out different inputs, sources, and then another one that chooses which source is going through to here. And uh, we'll do some voltage measurements, I think, because uh, what if it's just bad power supply? Um, that would really screw up the ability to do all the D2A and sampling action. I'm curious to see the underside of this board and just make sure the solder joints look alright. Some of these regs look pretty warm. Uh, discoloured board there. Uh, and these caps have seen a bit of heat, so we can probably check those. Well, someone has been here before. As you can see down in the bottom right, there's a giant crack through the PCB. And it looks like it may have broken at least one trace there. So, I'm just going to check the continuity through that trace. Mm. Well, that seems okay, but it certainly looks like it's cracked through the uh, solder mask. I might run a wire just to make sure it lasts. Well, this looks kind of hairy, doesn't it? I've got things arranged in a way that I can turn stuff on. Now the main power amp module is not connected and I don't think we care. I don't think the system will care, uh, cross fingers, because um, it's just feeding its signal and whatever the signal level is uh, will determine how loud it is out the other end. So all it is is just uh, a power block amplifier that has no intelligence to it. It just does what it's told basically. So we only need this, the input board, uh, this board. I've got a weird feeling that this board, which normally sits under this one in the middle, um, supplies the power rails to the processor board. So we've got power coming in here, off of, off of here. And there's another connector that runs to the processor board. And I haven't yet found uh, another connector on the processor board that may be passing power to it. This is actually power from the power board to the input board and output processing to our D2As. And this is the digital signal that comes in for the D2As. Um, and there's one other connector which goes to... Okay, so that connector goes to the processing board. And this is what I thought was... This is what I thought was my analog out. Because it, it's analog to digital and back to D to analog. So that's what I thought that cable was until it backed into these um, A to uh, D to A's. This intermediate board sits really nicely just here. So you just pop it down in there um, and the RCA connectors hold it perfectly out from the side of the case so it's not going to short against anything. So great little spot to tuck it out the way uh, when trying to do measurements. And then, of course, just some insulating material to stop this from touching the main input filter. I think we start... Uh, we're not going to be able to hear anything, of course, so we're just going to be... Let's, let's stick the scope in, and we'll start poking around and just see what voltage levels look like and that sort of thing. And if we can see an audio signal, because, of course, if it is working, we're getting audio signals out of these these wires here which go to the amp and I don't know which one is for CD input uh, left and right channel I don't know which one's left and right channel but we'll figure it out we had a relay click so stuff is happening but it's not going to click any speaker outputs is it 
so that we don't care about that. I've got it stuck in some weird mode because it's not happy with having no amplifier module. <laughs> uh, oh, mm, weird. But there is no comms to the amplifier module, it's just power. And those two red wires, what do they go to? We should be able to probe voltages, which is what we were hoping to do from the first place. So I'm probing the power connector to the input board and there's not really any noise on there. It's at 500 millivolts per division, so it's fairly, fairly tame. Power board itself. I suppose that looks all clean. And what about onto the digital board? Looks like all the filtering's really good. Um, looks like the supply to our, possibly the supply to our DSP. And that kind of looks all right. Hmm. Okay, well I'm not seeing any um any really bad um ripple or lack of filtering on any of those lines. Right, so no schematic, so we've got to get our head around where things go. Um of course uh we know that this a uh, little uh, multiplexer. Was it multiplexer? Yeah. We know this IC takes our input signal. It selects which source and then spits it out to the rest of the system. Um, at that point, it uh, makes its way down to um, the digital board. And then... Once it's done its processing, it somehow makes it back up to here. Um, and looking at the scope, I, I really don't see a lot of digital. Like, it's all noise and rubbish. But, um, so I haven't quite worked out how this gets. This is a digital to analog converter, but it is putting out the sine wave that I poke into it. So it's getting some info somehow. Um... And a couple of weird things that are going on. So uh, after a few seconds of turning it on, uh, the output will just go all over the place, like really unstable, huge DC offset, and, and it loses uh, symmetry of the waveform. Um, and I thought maybe the power supply was flaking, but that stays constant. Um, and to work out how, how, how the path of the audio goes through to the output so I'm still trying to work out how the volume is done um, I haven't quite figured out I mean I'm, I'm assuming that the uh, binary data stream must contain some volume information some uh, as well like uh, I haven't quite worked out how that does that um, um, but anyway, trying to work out where everything goes, and what I did was I took a photo. So I took a photo of the um, back of the PCB. This is our DAC that we're interested in. Um, however, the information gets to it digitally. Who knows? There's a serial. You, you probe the serial data stream input and it just looks like rubbish down in the sort of the 20 millivolts uh, you know it's just non-existent so I'm not sure what's going on here yet um, but we do have uh, a feedback pin um, and an output now these are a current source uh, DAC so the output is a current source and uh, uh, we've got um, our right channel is pins 9 and 8. So 
Uh, 9 is our feedback and 8 is our output. 8 goes into an op amp, uh, which then carries on out to another op amp, which then goes to our main amplifier. That's our main signal out. Um, and we've got the uh, uh, left channel on pins 20 and 21. Again, a feedback and an output. Uh, so, um, yeah. 21 being our output goes to an op amp, and the output of that op amp goes up to our main output. Um, luckily, it's there's a breakout of RCA connections on the back, so we've got our main uh, output to the amp goes to RCA outputs as well. So we're, I'm just plugged into the back of those and measuring makes it easy. Uh, um, yeah, so I've got a second trace up, so I'll show you that shortly. Um, but looking at it on the board, remember that's upside down, so if we look at it over here, uh, there's our DAC. Uh, this op amp is the one that goes down for the right channel, goes down here and then it snakes on up through here. Uh, and then uh, the left channel comes up to this op amp and uh, both channels end up at this op amp and passes it on out to the amp. And no, no variation at any point in, in signal level with volume control. Now it doesn't seem to matter which input I use at all. Well, okay, so the output op amp I was pointing to, that's front and uh, left and right, front, left and right. Uh, I don't know which one's rear and center yet. Um, and it doesn't matter which input I use, it all goes to this op amp. So this DAC is our like our main DAC. Uh, I haven't quite worked out how to instigate the other two DACs. So yeah, uh, maybe this op amp solely does front and rear. And you'll see the yellow trace is our output to uh, the amp. Here we go. I uh, should have checked the selector IC, input selector IC, shouldn't I? Oh, well. So if we have a look on pin, uh, we've got pin 20 and 21 here. So that's our output, the output pin there, which is 20, pin 20. Uh, if you look at the feed, oh sorry, hang on, that's our feedback pin, which is the output of the op amp that it's feeding, it comes back as feedback, and that's, that's a nothing pin. So, pin 21, which uh, on the data sheet is I out, it doesn't show us anything because it's a current source, it's not really a voltage uh, as such, I guess, so there's nothing going on there. So there's our pin 20 feedback, which is coming from the output of uh, the first op amp that, that that DAC feeds. If we go up to the op amp itself, uh, we've got pin 8. There's the output there. Oh, and you saw the yellow line drop. That trace, you saw it go all crazy. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> and that happens straight out of the deck, like for no apparent reason. The voltage rails remain constant when that happens. Now the output of that first op amp heads up to that, th that third op amp. And as you can see, that's our more amplified signal coming out there. And uh, if I adjust the volume, there's no change in amplitude anywhere along the way. Pin 15, serial data in. It's just got a big DC offset on it. There's nothing going on there. Um, yeah, and uh, the clock in, which is 16. There's not a lot going on there either, just a small DC offset. So I started thinking, maybe we've got a bad DAC. Uh, it could be 
it could be doing something nasty to the data line so we can't even see the data uh, it's still I don't know how it's getting the signal in order to create an output though so here's our feed from our first op amp in the line to the output op amp and if I turn the volume down to zero volume set at zero you can see all it's done is mute the output we'll go one up not muted back to zero muted so it's just shorting out the output of uh, probably after a resistor because there's the output of our main, um, last op amp there but uh, it is then yeah that's it goes from that op amp through a capacitor to the output um, so there'll be a trend there well there's transistors there uh, they'll be getting turned on at zero volume to short the output signal to m effectively mute it yeah so the mute control is is I guess quite a bit separate to the the volume side of things of course there's a mute button on the front too we can just push that and it kills it as well if that DAC is bad can we see it if we do maybe a diode measurement on the uh, pins there and compare it to the others because it is connected to uh, identical circuits there's basically three replicated circuits here um, so why don't we do that and see if there's any variation because the DAC could be failing internally somehow so what I'm going to do with positive lead on ground I'm just going to probe the uh, the output and feedback pins and we'll see what the reading is and compare it to the other two decks there as well so this is our output pin so we've got some diode junction there 0.6 this is our feedback pin is 1.1 nine ish climbing a little bit something there and if we look at the other side here's our feedback pin and our output pin now comparing the same ones on the other IC beside it there's pin 8 so we have a same 0.6 there. There's pin 9. We've got 1.59 there. That's 1.2. 1.59. The old one, 1.2. And if we compare pin uh, 20, 1.59 and the output on that side 21 is 0.6 our first one 1.2 and 0.6 now if we look at the third deck what we got there 1.6 on our feedback pins and 0.6 on our output pins so there's definitely a difference on our uh, feedback pins now is that a in-circuit difference or is that a problem inside the DAC itself I think the easiest way to answer this question is just to just to pull it out and pull the, one of the other DACs out and put it in and just swap them over and just see if the problem resolves or or what happens. Let's check the oh, actually I can't check the data lines because they're all they're all linked together, so you're kind of measuring all the chips at once. Okay, I thought I'd check them anyway. This is one of the DACs. This is the other DAC. This is ground to serial data in. And this is the DAC that
that we're looking at at the moment, the one we're focusing on, well, that does not look good at all. And that's going to destroy our serial data signal. And that's probably why it's not responding very well to any other command. I say we take the chip out. It could still be a faulty component somewhere else on the board. It could even be a fault back to the processor. How about I unplug the, I'm going to unplug the leads to the processor. And then we'll take that measurement again and just see if it changes. Oh, look at that. Okay. That's really interesting. The uh, output pins don't change, <laughs> the feedback pins, but that looks okay with the um, processor board disconnected. I reckon we've got a fault still on the processor board again. Okay, let's haul the board out again, the processor board, and we have to go over it with a fine tooth comb, try and trace this line back to uh, where it enters that board and see what's going on down there. Let's find out which pin on this connector goes to pin 15, which is the top right here. And that's our serial data line for this chip. Um, I guess, yeah, obviously they, they're separate so that it can feed different data streams to each one depending on what's going on. So uh, let's just run down in continuity mode. There we go. That one, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six pin up from the bottom. And here's our connector from, so six one up. Okay, so it's not the from the red end, it's from the other end. Sixth one up from there, and which pin's ground? One of those, hopefully one of those is ground. I need a reference. Um, just make sure we're using the same ground. There seems to be two grounds, audio and a data, but they seem to be tied together anyway. But we'll just um, diode mode again. We go ground to the sixth pin. Two, three, four, five, six. We should get our, that's interesting, it's point one. But, um, let's plug that back on there and double test it. Yep, six pin up. So with the data, this data plug connected, I'm getting a good reading. It's 0.6. Here's a big capacitor. Let's just um, run along until we hear a beep. Oh, here we go. Okay, there's a couple of pins that make for a ground. But that's definitely a ground. Cool. So that's that connector left pin. Okay, so if we try that again, we want our diode mode and positive on ground and pin six. Well, not pin six, the sixth pin along one, two, three, four, five, six. And it's point six. So I've tried it again. I thought maybe there was uh, an undischarged DC bias on there that was upsetting the uh, reading. Um, and I've tried it again. Sure enough, I turn it off. It's all unplugged. I'm now getting from ground to the data pin. Uh, was it pin 15? Serial data in, yep. Is uh, 0.05 something or other. Like it's a, Like it's some kind of short. <laughs> uh, let's have a look if I just probe. Sorry. Uh, and we'll go uh, ground to pin 15. 44 ohms. So maybe something's latching up or something getting stuck. I don't know. We have no voltage anywhere in the system at the moment. Uh, it's been off for a couple of minutes now. I'm going to go with my last theory. I'm going to swap that that one out. Um, it's a quick thing. It'll either prove it 
or disprove it and then we can keep looking but so far nothing really makes any sense okay all swapped and no change we're still getting full signal level on the output and yeah no variation 